As an independent artist exhibiting in outdoor art festivals for almost two full decades, I've learned a lot of tricks and tips that make my life easier, safer, and more efficient. In this video, I'm going to share a whole bunch of them with you. Good morning. I'm here in St. Petersburg, Florida this weekend to exhibit at the St. Petersburg Fine Art Festival. It is like perfect art show weather for a change this weekend. We have two clear days, which is like the first weekend all winter that that's happened. At least it shows that I've been at. So in this video, I want to share a bunch of things that I've learned over my past 17 years of exhibiting at fine art festivals. Little things that maybe I take for granted now, just little common sense tips that I've picked up over the years that make exhibiting in fine art festivals a little bit easier, safer, more profitable, whatever it be. And I guess uh, starting with what I'm doing right now is riding my bike from the parking area to the art show. Unfortunately, many times at art festivals, the artist parking area is kind of far from where the art show is. And there's not always a shuttle provided. And even if there is, I generally don't take it because I don't want to wait around for the shuttle. So I keep a folding bike in my van. I also keep an air compressor and um, vehicle jump starter combination thing in my van so that I can fill up the tires on my bike when they get low and um, it's also saved me and some other artists a bunch of times when you know we leave the the door on our van open too long and then that kills the battery so it's a quick way to jump start the van. So I'm going to share a whole bunch of little tips and tricks that I've learned over the years in this video and um, some of the whoa almost hit a squirrel there holy crap. I'm also going to be putting links to the exact things that I talk about in the description of this video so you can get the exact things that I'm talking about. Probably the most important thing about setting up an art show booth is securing it properly to the ground. This is important not just for the protection of your artwork and your tent, but the safety of other artists and people at the show. We've all seen videos of storms and even just normal high winds on a perfectly clear day coming through and flipping over tents, and you definitely don't want this to happen to you. There's two methods that I use to weigh down my booth. The first one are these heavy kettlebells that I bought on Amazon. You really need a minimum of 45 to 50 pounds per leg, and I've seen some shows require as much as 70 pounds per leg. I used to use these um, PVC weights that I filled with concrete that you see a lot of artists use. Unfortunately, a giant PVC weight only weighs about 30 pounds and it takes up a lot of room and it rolls around in the van a lot. These kettlebells are way easier to use. They have a built-in handle and they're much more compact. The other method I use for weighing down my booth when we're allowed to stake into the ground are these corkscrew style dog stakes that screw into the ground nice and deep and then you can hook the straps of your tent to them. These are the perfect things to use when you're allowed to stake into the ground for some extra security. Not only do your weights and stakes have to be of high quality, but you need good high quality tie down straps like these too. Another thing I learned, unfortunately the hard way, is that you need to have some way to connect the bottoms of your pro panels to your tent. One time I was at a show and it was super windy and the wind actually pushed the pro panels in where they attach together and some of my pieces fell off the wall. So what I've learned to do is zip tie the bottom of them to my stay bars on the bottom of the tent using super duty zip ties. These aren't just ordinary zip ties, they're like industrial strength zip ties and I'll put a link to those in the description of the video. And that does a few things. It keeps the panels from pushing in if the wind blows too hard and it also adds some strength and rigidity to my booth as well as added weight. So good all around. You can also use them to zip tie the top of your panels to your tent bar as well if they'll reach. Mine don't quite reach so I use these tent hooks from Pro Panels to secure the top of the panels to my tent. To hang my pieces on the Pro Panels there's two different things that I do. Um, the first thing for lighter weight pieces I use these things called Harmon hooks. They were developed by an artist and you can still buy them directly through him. It's like a big Velcro patch with a hook riveted right to it. It Velcros right to the wall and then you can hang your artwork using that. The other method I use for hanging pieces on the wall are these cable hooks. And these work really well for bigger, heavier pieces. Even though the Harmon hooks say they'll hold up to 40 pounds each, I like the security of the cable hooks better for heavy pieces. The cable has a hook at the top that hooks over the top of the pro panel. Then you can add these metal hooks to the cable here and hang multiple pieces on one cable. And these can hold really heavy pieces of art. 
Now, even though I don't typically sit down very much during an art show, I find I sell much better when I'm standing up. I have a tall director style chair that I keep in my van and bring out at shows where if I do need to take a break, I can sit down and still be at talking level with people. Personally, I like this really lightweight folding camping chair. It folds up nice and flat, fits in my van nice and easily, and is super sturdy, has a little table on the side. I know a lot of artists like those big, heavy, wooden director's chairs. I would recommend just testing them out and seeing which one is more comfortable for you. The wooden ones are, are probably much more comfortable, but I like the size, convenience, and weight of the camping chair that I have. And since I don't sit very much during the day, it really works fine for me. Whichever one you get, make sure you get a chair that's nice and high so that if you are sitting, you're still at talking level with patrons. You'll need a way to accept credit cards for purchases of your artwork at the art show. Most artists, including myself, use Square to accept credit cards. It's an easy to use, reliable service with industry standard rates. Signing up is free and you'll get their most current promotional rate when you scan this QR code to sign up or use the link that I'll put in the description. The bag that my art show tent came in was not very good quality and it was really heavy to carry. So I recently got this long ski bag that has wheels at the bottom that I can put my tent poles in and then wheel to wherever I need to go. It was pretty hard to find one that was long enough to fit the poles that go in an art show tent. So of course, I'll put the link to the exact one that I got that fits my tent really nicely in the description. Unfortunately, not every art show has an easy and convenient load-in where you can drive right to your space and casually unload and set up. So it's really important to have a good dolly like this one in case you need to cart your stuff in and out of a show site. I also have these rolling tool chests that I recently got to keep some of my prints in, but they can be used to carry your tent and other supplies too. They're nice, good, heavy duty, high quality rolling tool chests. But loaded up with all my prints, they're really heavy so I got this ramp that helps me roll them in and out of my van. Another thing I find really important, but I see so many artists uh, not doing this, is to wear a name tag. This way, even if people don't read your name tag, they'll know who the artist is in the booth. And this is something that I know I've talked about in other videos, but it's so helpful that I think it uh, deserves being mentioned again, is to have a QR code like this in your booth so that people can scan it and then either follow you on Instagram or you can have it set up for Facebook. I've seen people use a QR code for their email list signups, which is another great thing that you should definitely have an email list. I have a clipboard on my desk that I use where people can write in their email address with a pen. When people buy something from me, I also ask if they would like to join my email list. My email list has become a huge source of revenue for me. So make sure you sign up for an email list. I'll put a link to Brevo, who is the email list server that I use. I highly recommend their service. Um, and when you sign up through the link that I'm going to put in the description of this video, your email list is going to be free for an unlimited amount of emails on your list. I'll also put a link to the blank email list sign up form that I made that you can download and put your logo on the top and use in your booth so that people can easily sign up for your email list. I feel like I mention email lists in uh, so many of these videos, but it's just that important to have an email list. Not only will it boost your sales, but when you send it out and let people know that you're coming to a show, it'll boost sales for all the artists around you as well. To safely transport my artwork to and from art shows, I use these protective bags that I make out of Reflectix insulation. It's important to use the brand that I'm going to link to in the description below because I've tried some other reflective insulation and the quality is just garbage on some of the other ones. I have a really old and kind of crummy looking video now looking back on it um, where I show you exactly how to make these bags that I'll link to in the description also. Hopefully these were really helpful to you. If you have any tips and tricks of your own, please let me know in the comments because I'm constantly learning new things and evolving and sharing new information and uh, working to improve myself and my display. So I'd love to hear some of your tips. And as always, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can see more helpful videos like this one. That's so cool.